turning a 14 inch face plate out of aluminum on the Grove milling attachment. This is one of the final accessories made. The others include the riser block for the compound to bring the cutting tool up to the maximum height of the Grove miller. At the base of the uh, milling attachment, you can see a tension plate to span the gap in my bed. This is originally designed for a 9 inch tub bed blade, but the new modification is including the cut pulling for the pulling hub rather than using the paper attachment to the pulling drive, which extend it out two inches further. So this arrangement here gives me much more bed clearance. As we can see here, the bed clearance is of particular use when the horizontal milling arbors are in place. The two primary advantages of this system are conventionally the horizontal milling capability, in which case this riser block and the uh, compound is replaced with a cheat table which I customized as well in another application because the original put the soft bend blade. And so for horizontal milling with a dub milling or a horizontal uh, arbor, I have three different lengths of arbors, and the longest one has a uh, end support that uh, is a special V-block milled to fit the lathe ways to support that bearing at the outer end. But one of the primary advantages we see here is the ability to swing 14 inches on the spinning plate. Obviously, we won't be doing heavy duty machining, but this will give the capability for many things casting, irregular shapes, connecting rods and steam engine models, large uh, drivers for locomotive wheels, or even with a horizontal arbor to be able to turn disc brakes. Uh, 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 cars that I would not normally be able to do on this way, or even drums. So not that I do that that much anymore, but it's just great to have that capability, and I admire the design of this system so much for what it can do. The, the creativity of it is the design, how well it's built. It, it's just the uh, overall capability to survive this shop. What we're doing here is facing off this blank of 5 inch aluminum. I chose aluminum because we don't need a lot of precipitating mass at this large diameter. I could have picked up a spare base plate on eBay, but they're massively heavy. Uh, and it would be inappropriate in this application. I think it would put a lot of strain on the bearings. So with this setup here, a nice light but large base plate, one of the projects that's going to be done soon is a router cable plate on the machine out of 3 inch aluminum, it'll be about 9 by 10 inches, or 9 by uh, 9 by 10 square custom machine board out for uh, adapter plates for the uh, router on the router table. And this will give me the capability to do that. This plate will be taken off of here and will be put on the rotary table on the mill where we'll mill slots. We'll uh, mill, uh, or we'll throw radio holes in the thread and tap. So we'll use a divided uh, plate on the rotary table to do that. So uh, this I've never done before. So all this is uh, a lot of fun and journeying into new areas for me. Uh, what I did here was I adapted a, uh, one of the key uh, arbors that came with this was, this is by the way, a Ron the Sharp 9 taper in the spindle. And one of the key adapters that came with it was the adapter with the inch and a half eight threads to match the south end lathe attachment. So using a chuck uh, driver plate, I machined an adapter, and then cut out this large blank on the woodworking band saw, running at normal rate of speed. And screwed that up on here, and we'll face this so it runs through the spindle, and we'll have this enormous face plate. Lots of fun, an amazing design. And I was very fortunate to acquire this on eBay for a very reasonable price. No one else bid on this. I was amazed. They came with a complete, comprehensive set of tooling and arbors, which in and of themselves is worth as much as, as this device. Here's samples of some of the uh, tooling that did come with this, including a large horizontal arbor. 
And then one of the key concepts here that's going to make this so useful was the availability now from the imports of the brown and sharp palettes. Brown and sharp number nine palettes. And what this does is in the drawbar on the attachment allows me to chuck up all kinds of standardized tooling. I typically go for two quarters straight shank and that just opens up the door in this odd and obsolete uh, taper for to adapt all kinds of modern tooling. End mills, uh, stub arbor mills, certain stalls, uh, arbors. And so we're having a lot of fun customizing the device and we've just begun to tap the uh, possibilities. What I did with here was uh, adapt the what we call the Redfield Industrial Paint Scheme, what I call my dad many years ago, on the South Bend lathe that I learned on that was his, adapted a paint scheme from, I believe, uh, Pittsburgh Paints, an industrial safety scheme for the green for machinery, you see this color for the uh, control handles, and then orange was reserved for dangerous parts. It's a great theme, I apply it to the, uh, the mill, and other tooling in the shop, gradually we'll have the entire, all shop accessories painted in this color scheme, which adds a whole other touch to the shop. So, 